I'm just going to do a quick factoring review with you here. So when you do go to factor, like we've gone over a bunch of different methods and ways and strategies for factoring. Uh, so to summarize it all, when you go to ask to factor, the very, very first thing we should always do is we should look for a greatest common factor, right? GCF or greatest common factor. Uh, so here's an example. Uh, let's start with that. Uh, so an example of a greatest common factor would be this uh, 20x to the fourth plus 5x. All right, so what I want you to do on each of these is I want you to pause the video and give it a try and see if you can get it, and then we'll talk about it together. So the common factor on this one would be 5x. So the 5x goes out in front. Okay, and then we put what's left, 20 divided by 5. Remember, taking out a factor of 5, it's like saying 5 times 4. So it's like dividing by 5, at least me with a 4. I took out one of the x's. Uh, now this is kind of tricky. Right, 5 is 5 times 1, so if I take out the 5, it leaves me with a 1, and I took out the x. Or you can think of it as being 5 divided by 5. Okay. So there's our factored form, 5x times 4x cubed plus 1. So no matter what, doesn't matter how many terms it has, if you're asked to factor, you're always going to do a greatest common factor first. After that, it depends on the number of terms. And so if you look down here, we're, we're going to go through each of these. I think we'll start with the three terms. Um, and we'll do that first, it's the longest one. Then we'll do the, an example for two terms and four terms. So if you take out the common factor, or if there's not a common factor, and it has three terms, then we're going to factor it this way. So there's, there's really three different types of problems on three terms. The first one is when, so three terms are in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So if a is equal to 1, in other words, there's nothing in front of the x squared, then it's this first type of problem. And what we do is we look for, right, we want to find, we want to find the factors of c, the last number, that add, that add up to bb. Okay. So here's an example. If you want to put this down, a squared plus 8a minus 20. So if it's got three terms, we're always going to do these two sets of parentheses. And really, we're just thinking of multiplication backwards. I know that times that has to give me the a squared. Well, that's just got to be a and a. When I multiply those two together, it's got to give me a negative 20. So we can make a list of things I can multiply together to get negative 20. It could be negative 1 and 20, negative 2 and 10, and negative 4 and 5. So these are the factors of c, right? We said the factors of c right i have them all listed here we want the ones that add up to to add up to be b well in this case b is a positive 8 so which one of those add up to be a positive 8 is that negative 2 plus two, negative 2 and 10 so i'm going to go a minus 2 and a plus 10 and we're done these are the easiest trinomials to factor right that's when right there is nothing here there's no leading term there really is like it's it's equal to 1 um, that just means there's nothing there and we can't see it all right, so the second type of problem is when a does not equal 1. So I've got, like in this example right here, you see that 10 out in front? It's got a leading coefficient out there in front. When we do these, these are going to be the guess and check problems. So guess and check. The process is really similar to the one above. Um, that little shortcut where we look for the factors of c to add up to bb, that doesn't work anymore. But other than that, the process is pretty similar. So what we're going to do is still do my two sets of parentheses. By the way, we should be checking for a common factor. This one doesn't have one, but you should check that and take that out first before you do anything else. Um, so you're looking at what times to get to get 10x squared. So that could be 10x and x. But there's another possibility. It could be 5x times 2x. So I actually have two possibilities. Okay, when I times these last two numbers, I have to get a negative 6. Well, let's make our list just like we did up above. It could be negative 1 and 6, negative 2 and 3, and we could switch those signs. Well, the, harder, the hard part about these is you don't know which one's going to work. I can't just say which ones add up to be negative 11 because there's that 10 out in front. So instead, I just have to try some numbers. You know, I could try the negative 1 and 6, negative 1 and 6. And the way we check it is we times the outside 2. That's 60x, and the inside 2 is minus 1x. 
you know, that's definitely not a minus 11 when we combine them together. Uh, I could try switching them around. I could put the, uh, switch the, the 6 and the 1. Uh, that would be 10x minus 6x. That's still not negative 11. Uh, we could try the 6 and the 1 down here. I think it's a 2 and a 3 that work, but we'll try it just in case. Um, so I go 5x minus 12x. Right, that's 5x, the outside 2, inside 2. Nope, that gives me minus 7x. That's close, but not what we want. Um, if you switch that around, if I put the 6 over on the other side, it's not going to work because I would have 6 times 5 is 30. Right, That's not going to give me something that works there. So let's try the 2 and the 3. I'm pretty sure it works down here. But let's try if I go uh, 2 and 3. So I'm going to go... 15x minus 4x, that equals 11x. Well, I got a positive 11x and I want a minus 11x. That's okay. All I have to do then is come up here and switch the minus and the plus. So I'm going to put the, uh, now I forgot which way I had it. I think it was, this is the opposite way, I believe. So now I have, that's now a negative 15x, and that's now a positive 4x. That gives me a negative 11 so this is my factored form. So if you remember, those, those are more complicated. And if you need some practice in that, you can go back and review that section. Um, that was 2.7. I have a video where we did lots of examples of these. But, but that's when I've got that leading coefficient out in front, right? These are the easy ones up here where there's nothing in front of the a squared. This one has a 10 in front of the x squared. makes it harder. There is one other type of problem I wanted to do. And that is, this is still a, a trinomial, right? A quadratic trinomial. And you could do guess and check with this, but there's a faster way. If you remember, we went through the special cases. So this is a special case, special case, and it's called a perfect square. And just to remind you how these work, again, you could do guess and check. It works fine, but it will take a long time. And see if I recognize that 9x squared is a perfect square, right? I square 3x to get 9x squared. And 25 is a perfect square. I square 5 to get it. And then I've got to check that middle term. The way we do that is we times the 3x and the 5 together. That's 15x, and then I times it by 2. Well, that gives me 30x. It's okay that it's a minus. It could be a minus or a plus. That's fine. So that means that this is a perfect square. So now instead of doing guess and check, I know it's a perfect square. I just put the 3x in here and the 5 in here, and whatever sign is right there goes right there. So if it's a, a minus, I put a minus. If it's a plus, I put a plus. Now, if you'd done guess and check, you could have done the exact same thing, and you would have ended up with... 3x minus 5 and 3x minus 5 is my two factors, which is the same thing, right? That's the same thing as that. So you don't have to know this shortcut, but it sure saves you a lot of time. This is the pattern if you want to write it down. If you have a squared, sorry, ax squared. Let me fix that, sorry. Actually, no, we're going to leave it like that. We're going to go a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So the first term's a perfect square, the last term's a perfect square. The middle term is a times b times 2, right? That was the 2 times 15x, right? Or times, sorry, that was the 3x times 5, which is the 15x times 2. And if that checks off, you get it. Now, as a side note, so that factors to be a plus b squared. If this is a minus in there, I'll do a different color. So if that's a minus right there, that just changes to a minus right there. So it'd be an A plus B, it's A minus B like the example we just did. So that's the most complicated one is if it has three terms. If it doesn't have three terms, right, it's either gonna have two or four. So let's go through an example of both of those. So if I take out the common factor and it's got four terms, then we just, this is the last one you just did, then we do grouping. So under, under the four terms, if you wanna put grouping, and that's how we factor. So let's do this example. You can pause it and write it down if you want, but we'll go through this example of grouping. So again, with grouping, I look for a common factor between all four, and there's not one. So instead, I just group the first two and the last two together. Um, be careful with this one. Eight and five does not have a common factor, but they both have n's. So I can take out an n squared. That'd leave me with 8n minus 5. And then 56 and 35, I can take out a 7. That would leave me with a n minus 5. Remember, for factoring by grouping to work, these two have to match up, which they do. So now I take that a n minus 5 and I put it out in front. Right? I take it out of both. And that leaves me with 
and n squared plus seven. It's just, you're just taking out a common factor and we're done. So again, make sure you remember how to do four terms, no one's grouping. Again, if you wanna review, we have that video uh, back on Canvas where you can go through those examples of grouping. If you've taken out your common factor and it has two terms, I think this is the easiest one of all of them. So if it has two terms, this is how it's gonna work. So if you look at this example, I have 16x squared minus 25. All right, so if it's got two terms, the only way it's going to factor besides a common factor is by the difference of squares. Difference of squares. Uh, difference of squares looks like this. If I have something squared minus something squared, what happens is the middle term cancels out. And for To make the middle term cancel out, it's got to be A minus B and A plus B. Okay, so let's look at this example. I have 16x squared minus 25. So let's see if 16x squared is a, a perfect square. So what do I score to get 16x squared? Just be 4x. And what do I score to get 25? And there's a minus. There has to be a minus, okay? Has to be a minus. If there's a plus, it does not work. All right, that's where the name comes from up here, right? It's the difference of squares. Difference means subtraction, right? So I'm taking two squares and I'm subtracting them. All right. So this one fits. I've got a perfect square minus a perfect square. What I got, what I usually think to myself is that means the middle term's missing. So why is the middle term missing? Well, the middle term is missing because there's a minus and a plus. Okay, there's my factored form. So we can kind of think through that, like what, you know, why does it have two terms? It has two terms because the middle term is missing. Why is the middle term missing? Uh, it's because um, they're opposites, right? 4x minus 5 and 4x plus 5. They're actually called, if you want to write this down, this isn't important right now, but we'll talk more about these later on. They're actually called conjugates. So having the 4x and the 5 and the 4x and the 5, the same ones, a minus, one's a plus, we call conjugates. And when they multiply them out, right, that middle term cancels. Okay, so again, when you go into factor, first thing you always check for is, um, is there a common factor? And that doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter how many terms there are. There could be two, three, four, a hundred. It doesn't matter. Look for a common factor. Second thing is, how many terms does it have? Two terms, we do difference of squares. Three terms, we're either going to do our shortcut, where I take the factors of C to add to be B, or guess and check, or the perfect squares. If it's got four terms, it's grouping. Okay, so if we can kind of just have that flow chart in our brain, uh, that helps to organize our thoughts as we go through and do that. Thanks.